In 1995, long before the school opened, parents with children attending St. Joseph Catholic Parish School and community-minded members of the church came together to figure out how to ensure that a kindergarten through 12th grade Catholic education could be possible here in Athens. Uh, the pickup line at St. Joe's, we had uh, several groups of uh, parents sitting in uh, line waiting to pick up their kids and and the talk was, you know, why, you know, what are we going to do next year? You know, why don't we have a, a Catholic high school? And if you go back to Barbara Dooley, there's been talk over the years, many, many years, about um, the lack of Catholic high school here. And so, but they, that, that started as the, um, the Morrises and the Keens and the Lobers. Um, and that sort of formulated this idea. And they brought in people, uh, Richard Dunn and Father Dora, and they developed this Northeast Georgia Catholic High School Steering Committee. I got involved because I was honestly desperate for a high school for my children. We had them at St. Joseph's Catholic School. Both Vince and I went through Catholic grammar schools and Catholic high schools which formed, I am totally convinced, it formed our structure to be adults. We learned right from wrong. We learned discipline. And I didn't, I really didn't see that in the uh, public environment. And there was no opportunity for my children to continue Catholic education. And so that's why I got involved, thinking it would be, okay, we're gonna build a school and they'll be there in two years. But it didn't happen. Initial plans were to open the doors to the school in 2000, but setbacks caused a delay in that opening, a delay that if not for the determination of a few early supporters, could have ended the project and the eventual opening of a Catholic high school. The first question was, where will Northeast Georgia Catholic High School be located? In the early days, when Mike Morris was the president, and at that time we were like Northeast Georgia Catholic High School, um, we were looking at sites around town and Mike, who was a real estate attorney, had a either friend or client, I believe his name was Steve Ebert, who had a forestry service, and he told Mike about the property, uh, which at that time was like, I think, 104 acres roughly, and also told Mike that there was a lot of timber on the property that could be taken off. So that's how we ended up at, at Lavender Road, is that I think the price was somewhere in the 200 to 250,000 range, but we were able to take $100,000 in timber off the property. Before we really started developing the property, the neighborhood on the other side approached us about buying the property on that side of the creek. So, so we sold that off to them, and that's basically how we you know, paid off the debt on the property. And we started planning for the school and Tony Salome did the design. We hired Scott Fleming as the principal and he worked out of Tom's offices, um, basically developing the plan for the school and curriculum and, and getting the SACS accreditation. Eventually, Tom Scott, the principal of Trinity Accounting, became involved in the project. Under Tom Scott's leadership, the school was incorporated as Monsignor Walter J. Donovan Catholic High School, Inc. From the beginning of the school's history, enrollment and donations have not met the projections needed to sustain the school's operations budget. In the second year of operations, the board voted to close the school, determining that it would not be able to become viable for long-term sustainability. The concern was that there weren't enough people 
who were willing or able to continue to donate to Donovan for the long term. So they voted to close school, and I voted too, to close the school. And um, Deanna Dooley and I literally sat back to back. We were their backs suppressed against that. We thought they were going to rush us. We thought they were going to hang us up. And a lot of people assumed it was that Scott was leaving, you know, that he was saying he was leaving. But So it was real charged, and we, no one really knew what was going on. But we just laid it out there. And at that point, uh, two parents, Mark Christopherson, uh, raised his hand and said, you know, what can we do? We well, can, you know, this, we, we want to fight for this. Uh, Paula Cray uh, came up to me and said, can we fight for this? Sure, you can fight for it. And as they got together in the corner of a room and, and they started saying, what can we do to, to do this? And they literally met in the Cray's uh, kitchen with the faculty, all except for one. Um, uh, had decided uh, if, uh, we could, I mean, if we could come back, they were going to come back. And we sat around the table. So who wants to be principal? Not me. Not me. Not me. And, and Jeff Estes said, I'll do it. And so that, so we, that was, you know, start to look in place. And they started a new fundraising uh, for that. It got Buku's amount of money on paper. We never got it all in. Uh, I came on board, came back on board. Uh, uh, Scott Medine was uh, is uh, a deacon uh, at St. Joe's. I uh, wasn't a deacon then, but he, he was always had a very strong relationship with our blessed mother. <laughs> and he called me that day and said, I want to talk to you. He had been told, he had been praying with a lot of division between the Catholic Center and, and, and church at that time. And um, he'd been praying for something to bring them together. And he was told by the blessed mother to keep the school open. So he told me that. So what do you say to the Blessed Mother? I said, yes, ma'am. Monsignor Donovan Catholic High School remained open, and the Catholic education continuum in Athens was still an option for the Athens Catholic community. The decision to remain open was not an easy one. The Christoffersons and Crays, along with help from parents Chuck Brocker, Joe Keene, and Paul Kramer, Develop the plan for how to continue operations of the school so Donovan could remain open. Would it be enough for the long term? I'm still fighting for that Catholic high school. I am determined until I die, my last breath will be fighting for this high school. I know how important it is. And I also know that my children went to public schools. And I know they're not, the, they are devout Catholics, but they don't know our faith. They didn't get it in high school. We had our faith taught every day. So I just want to bring back some part of the kind of education that Vince and I got growing up and how much it meant to us that these kids don't have today. And that's why I keep fighting for it. Monsignor Donovan Catholic High School is approaching our 20th year educating the children of Northeast Georgia. There have been many ups and downs, highs and lows, but through it all, Donovan has become stronger and the mission and vision have been alive in the classrooms, on the athletic fields and courts, and in all aspects of the lived experiences of our students. Donovan is a gift from our founders. A Catholic high school in Athens would not be possible without all of the people who worked very hard and never gave up, even when the setbacks seemed like more than they could bear. Our founders are true leaders who have demonstrated their faith in God and us as stewards of their vision. The gift of a Catholic education has been made possible by their hard work and determination. We all benefit from this gift and now must ask ourselves if we are willing to do all we can to steward the mission and accept this gift for the future generations of children in the Northeast Georgia community. Why do you choose a Catholic education?